Hello and welcome back to the TBM 930 World Tour. If you fancy some pure pandemic escapism with a coastal tour of Florida, the Kennedy Space Center, Palm Beach, Miami by night and a sunset landing into the city of Naples, and before all of that, some of the world's most famous theme parks in intricate detail, you have come to the right place. Don't go away. Welcome back to Kissimmee Gateway Airport in Florida. After an epic journey on the TBM World Tour so far, taking in Scotland, Iceland, Greenland, Canada and the east coast of the US, we are now currently just a few miles south of Disney World and this is a leg of the tour that I've been particularly looking forward to. Today we have a real treat for you. First, we're taking the drone out to Disney World and to Universal Studios. If you've not been able to go anywhere thanks to COVID-19, I know I haven't, and need an injection of some theme park fun into your life, you'll find it right here in just a few moments time. Then we're going to take off from runway 24 here at Kissimmee and we're going to head to Cape Canaveral to see where NASA landed its shuttles back in the 80s, 90s and 2000s to where it launched the Apollo missions to the moon during the 60s and early 70s and of course where it launched the current Mars Perseverance rover uh, mission just last year. That rover landed on Mars just a week or so ago, so uh, Cape Canaveral for NASA is still very, very active. From the Cape, we're going to head south. We're going to follow the coastline to Palm Beach, to Fort Lauderdale, and then to Miami, where I took some drone footage of the city at night, which is well worth waiting for. Finally, we'll cut across to the Gulf Coast to our final destination, Naples, Florida, where we'll touch down in the beautiful, warm evening sunset. So theme parks first, let's get going. So if you have ever visited Disney World before, this may look quite familiar. Just after you leave Interstate 4, headed north on World Drive, you will go through the signs welcoming you to Disney World. Our first stop is Epcot. Technically it stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, but as any visitor will tell you, it also stands for every person comes out tired, because the site is massive and it's likely you'll walk a long way during your visit. Epcot is dedicated to the celebration of human achievement, technological innovation and international culture, and it features a blend, just over on the right hand side here, of theme park attractions and, we're flying right over it now, the World Showcase, which contains 11 pavilions each themed and dedicated to represent a specific country. In all at Disney World, there are four theme parks, two water parks, 27 themed resort hotels, and multiple golf courses, camping resorts, shopping centers, and other entertainment venues which lie within this 25,000 acre site. Our next stop here is Disney's Hollywood Studios. Pretty obvious, I guess, but it's a theme park inspired by show business and animated film. Hollywood Studios comprises seven themed areas which all are named after or inspired by different places and films uh, from the history of filmmaking. So there's Hollywood Boulevard, there's Echo Lake, there's Grand Avenue, there's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, there's Toy Story Land, Animation Courtyard and Sunset Boulevard and a host of attractions and live venues throughout. Just in front of us here there's a live Indiana Jones show that I've seen in that auditorium which is really cool. And now let's head over to see one of the water parks coming up here. This is Typhoon Lagoon. Typhoon Lagoon has the world's biggest wave machine, which operates in the darker blue bit of water, that square bit we're going over just now. It also has the excellent Crush and Gusher water slide, which we can see just in the foreground there now. It's a really fun water park. Great on a really hot day in Florida. Thoroughly recommend it. And beyond Typhoon Lagoon is downtown Disney. You've got Cirque du Soleil and Disney Quest, which is an indoor theme park. You've got loads of shops, live music, entertainment, restaurants, all kinds of stuff. It kind of comes to the life downtown Disney once all the parks have closed. Let's now go to Animal Kingdom. So we're going to head over there via Epcot again, which is coming up right in front of us now. Animal Kingdom is both the newest and the largest of the theme parks at Disney World and it's themed around the natural environment and animal conservation. So it's kind of part theme park, part zoo. And it covers some 530 acres of land here. Now it has a combination of traditional attractions, 
So it has the Expedition Everest roller coaster, which you can find in that mountain-like thing just on the right-hand side there. In addition, it exhibits hundreds of species of live animals in a variety of different environments, including at this sort of top end of the park up here, a kind of safari-like environment, which you can tour around as one of the attractions. Now you might notice this park's quite a long way from the rest of Disney World, which is entirely deliberate. The park is more isolated here to minimise external disruption to all the animals that they look after. The final park at Disney World is, of course, the Magic Kingdom. This is the original theme park and is perhaps the park that uh, people most associate with the idea of Disney World. It has the famous Cinderella Castle centrepiece and mainstay attractions such as Space Mountain, which you can just see is the white tent thing coming up here, Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain. There are other rides that don't end with the word mountain. Magic Kingdom is split into six, six themed lands, Main Street USA, Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, Tomorrowland and Liberty Square. You might be interested to know it's built over a series of tunnels which allow employees, known as cast members, to move through the park out of sight. It's just one example of how Disney tries to create this seamless sense of being in a fantasy world uh, where you won't, for example, see a staff member partly dressed in a costume heading off on their lunch break. So we're now going to bid farewell to Disney World and head east towards Orlando and Universal Studios, which is much closer into the city. Universal features eight themed areas, all situated around a large lagoon, pretty standard format for your Orlando theme park. Each area combines rides, shows, carriage appearances, shops and restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So here's the entrance to Universal. And uh, there's the Hard Rock Cafe just down there. And just beyond that, that blue bit is the Blue Man Group. Who knew? I have to ask for an audition. Do you have an audition yet? Oh, no, no, I'm not in the group yet. No, I'm afraid I just blew myself. There's got to be a better way to say that. I'm sorry. As a devotee of Arrested Development, I had to pay tribute to the most famous Blue Man group member of them all, Tobias Funke. But let's get back to the park. Over here we have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You can see Diagon Alley and Hogwarts over there. This looks like the Toon Lagoon over here. And then over this way, slightly confused, but that is meant to be a big green roller coaster there. At Marvel Superhero Island. Oh, and then this big thing over here is the Jurassic Park water ride. You go around Jurassic Park on a boat and then eventually go up to the very top of this building and there's a very, very big drop as you come out of it. That's Universal, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Kissimmee Gateway traffic, Golf Tango, Echo Whiskey, Alpha Type, TBM 930 taking off, runway 24. Departure to the south. Kissimmee Gateway traffic. Time now to get back underway with the flying, so we're going to be heading off to Cape Canaveral, where we'll be in just a few moments' time. Traffic King at 375 Charlie Fox, start the planning one at rank right cross and departure climbing the FR 3005 and feet along the traffic.
Welcome to Cape Canaveral, NASA's launch facility on the Atlantic coast of Florida. Let's get the uh, drone set up so we can go and explore this. Now if anyone's been on holiday to Florida you may have visited the Kennedy Space Center. If you haven't been there before, well worth a visit. Really, really interesting place to go and you get to see all of this for real. So this runway here is the old landing facility for the shuttles when they were operating several years ago. The arrow there is pointing at the Apollo 8 launch experience and part of the museum which houses a Saturn V rocket. The other arrow there is pointing to where the vehicle assembly building is located. That's where they used to build all the rockets which would be sent up, you know, but whether that was Apollo missions, whether that was shuttle missions. They were assembled there and then they were wheeled out on a crawler vehicle along this long track out to the launch pad. This is launch pad 39A. This is where man launched to go to the moon back in the 60s and early 70s and the launch pad is still operational today. Some of the SpaceX launches have taken place from this launch pad as far as I'm aware. So this is a huge part of the history of man's mission into space. Let's carry on south and head down to Palm Beach and Miami. Beach. Palm Beach is an interesting place. Its population nearly trebles during the winter months, apparently, according to a recent census. And it's also been home to a few US presidents. Now, one of those is John F. Kennedy, but if you can see the golf course just about to go under the wing now, that's roughly where Mar a Lago is. So for anybody who's followed the news, you've probably heard about Mar a Lago once or twice over the last four to five years. That's where it is. Thought I'd just point that out. Okay, let's carry on south. We're gonna go slightly inland now and head down to Fort Lauderdale and then on to Miami. Enjoy.
Welcome to Naples, Florida, everybody. This is the Gulf Coast. You can just see over on the right-hand side there the flashing lights of the runway. That's not the runway we're landing on. We're landing on runway 14 here at Naples tonight. Only a short distance over from the Atlantic coast where we got some fantastic shots of Miami at night. And what a sunset we enjoyed on the way over here. It's obviously not long to go from one side to the other so it's well worth exploring both coasts of Florida whilst we're here. Also I should add that Naples is a stop-off point on the TBM 930 World Tour at the explicit request of my two young sons. So they're only six and five. They, much like me, like their planes. To be honest they like anything which moves. They love buses, they love lorries, they love cars, they love aeroplanes, they love ships. Um, the whole lot. But we do spend a bit of time, particularly given all the COVID restrictions, we spend a bit of time at home learning how to fly in a Cessna 172. And both my boys are big fans of Steve O1 Canivo and Premier One Driver on YouTube. So we had to toss a coin. Miami Opelocker, where Steve O Canivo flies into, or Naples, Florida, where Premier One Driver flies into? Well, Premier One Driver won the toss up, and, it, uh, and Naples, Florida, it is. But it's great though because it does give us a good excuse to come out to the Gulf Coast. Of course, I just wish that this were a real TBM 930 and we were doing this in real life. But we can't all be as fortunate as, uh, as Premier One Driver and Steve Ocanevo to explore the skies for real. But as hopefully the TBM 930 World Tour is demonstrating, simulation nowadays is so realistic, it's so immersive, you can do so much with it that it's a good substitute. It's a really, really good substitute. When you get to a stage on Flight Sim that you can fly around the world and spot your own house, I think you're reaching a new level in terms of realism and immersion. So just turning onto our base leg now for runway 14. I love how the sunset is bouncing off those clouds in front of us, really lovely. I've obviously inserted the uh, drone footage at night of Miami after taking this uh, this video but well worth doing it was uh, great to see all the lights twinkling from all the skyscrapers in uh, in Miami and just to explore the city once it was dark as I say I haven't done an awful lot of night flying on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 just yet so I'm still getting used to just how great those night night effects are So uh, just now turning on to our final approach. It's a fantastic airport by the way to fly into Naples. If you're new to Flight Sim and you're thinking of a good place to learn how to do your approaches and landings, I couldn't recommend Naples more highly because it's got Landing. pretty much an airport on all points of the compass. So uh, it's really, really easy to give this one a go. Uh, uh, to give it a go and, and very very flexible for something like a Cessna 172 or if you want to graduate to a turboprop or a small jet they can all fit in here quite nicely. So just as this flight starts to wrap up a quick word about where we're going to next. Naples is actually the last stop certainly for the time being on the TBM World Tour uh, in the US. After this we are heading pretty much directly south not a long flight but to a very, very different place indeed, uh, to Havana in Cuba. We're going to stop over in Havana. I've managed to find an airport. It looks actually, on Google Maps, it looks like a disused airport in kind of the, the, a pretty central area of Havana, so we can get some really good shots of Havana going in there. Again, when you're in a TBM 930, you don't have to worry too much about complex ILS systems. You can just fly in anywhere. From Havana, we're then going to fly across the Caribbean to Kingston, Jamaica, and for those of you following me on Instagram, you'll have seen I did a quick straw poll on Instagram a week or so ago asking where to after Kingston? Caribbean Island Tour or Caracas in Venezuela? Well, Caracas in Venezuela won that poll. So from Kingston, Jamaica, we're then going to fly to Caracas. So the next episode goes Havana, Kingston, then Caracas. After Caracas, we're going to go and see Angel Falls. And 
we're going to go and explore the Amazon rainforest. So there's plenty to look forward to in the forthcoming episodes of the TBM 930 World Tour. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please check out the other videos on the TBM 930 World Tour playlist to see where we've been to before Florida. And of course, it'd be great. I'd hugely appreciate it if you could click like or even click subscribe if you feel like it and then you'll get a notification come through when I upload future videos in this series. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this has been fun and enjoyable and has given you half an hour of escapism from COVID-19 and being stuck at home. Join us next time for Havana, Kingston and Caracas. Bye bye for now.